In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Gwendolyn died with Christ and rose with Christ to new life. May she now share eternal glory.
my beloved sisters and brothers, we gather this morning with mournful, sorrowful hearts, and it feels as though the weather knew exactly how our hearts feel. The deepest condolences to the husband, children, grandchildren, and relative of our beloved Gwendolyn. We welcome all of you to this funeral mass celebrating the life of our dear sister in Christ, Gwendolyn Luby Snags. We recognize the presence of the Honorable Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley, our Prime Minister, Minister Terence Elsing, and all others gathered here. I hand over to Deacon Nigel Thomas, the son-in-law of Gwendolyn. I'm also assisted by Dr. Deacon Dr. Peter Thimothy, Father Dwight Black, and Deacon Nigel Thomas will guide us through this part of the Mass. Good morning, sisters and brothers. We will now move into our tributes, followed by the eulogy and the tribute song. On behalf of the family, I'd just like to ask that you respect their wishes. Those who have been selected for tributes would be presenting theirs at this point in time. For those who so feel moved to offer tributes, there'll be a repast immediately after our funeral liturgy and you're free to offer your tributes then. So without further delay, I would like to invite the Caribbean Nursing Organization to begin our list of tributes. You may please have your seats. Good morning, church. My name is Mrs. Elnora Warner, president of the Caribbean Nurses Organization. On behalf of the executive members of the board of directors and the entire community of member National Nurses Association, Good morning, church of the Caribbean Nurses Organization, CNO, we are deeply saddened by the passing of Mrs. Gwendolyn Snags, Vice President of CNO. The news of her passing came as a shock to us at a time when we were all looking forward to a grand post-pandemic reuniting at the planned face-to-face -face Caribbean Nurses Organization 32nd Biennial Conference hosted in Jamaica, 8 to 15 October 22. We are, we are now gathered as the executive board members and members of the Trinidad and Tobago Nurses Association delegation. The evidence that she had every intention to attend, as per usual, accompanied by her dear husband, is manifest by the registration to the conference. Mrs. Snags provided value-added, sacrificial service in the healthcare system of her beloved country, TNT her National Nurses Association, and to the Regional Professional Organization, CNO. Her mission was always in total alignment with that of CNO, that is, to ensure the health of all people in the region and advance the profession of nursing. We, her colleagues, CNO board members, admired and appreciated her calm yet passionate disposition and the strength of her character she displayed as she made her interventions at the board meetings. As president, I value her comments, critique, suggestions, 
on CNO issues, she did not waste words, always giving very prudent, succinct feedback, unhesitantly offering a compliment when she deems it fitting. As the CNO Secretary, Mrs. Patsy Henry aptly expressed in the CNO Board's WhatsApp chat at the news of her passing, and I quote, she had great wisdom and shared in a calm manner. Without doubt, CNO has benefited from her valuable contribution to the organization. We are truly grateful for the service she offered and express sincere thanks to you, Mr. Snads, and her other family members for sharing her with us through the support that you willingly gave her while she served on the board of CNO. On the behalf of CNO, I offer our deepest condolences to Mrs. Snacks, her other family members, close friends, and colleagues, and indeed the whole nation of Trinidad and Tobago. We pray that the peace of God will abide with you all as you mourn her loss. We know that you will miss her dearly, and so will we. However, her time has come. She has fought a good fight and kept her faith in God, which she always, without fear, freely expressed during our gatherings. She is gone. With all, but will always be remembered in the annals of the history of CNO. May her soul rest in peace perpetually. Thank you. I would now like to invite a tribute from the Honorable Justice Stanley John. I visited a patient at, at Ward 16 at the Port of Spain General, General Hospital. In conversation with him, he told me how the nurse who had worked the previous night was so kind and found her different from other nurses. I made it my duty to find out who that nurse was. I later learned that she was one nurse Gwendolyn Ruby Snats. As time passed, I got to know Everett very well and attended functions in a different capacity where Everett introduced me to his dear wife, Gwendolyn. I have pleasant memories of meeting her on several occasions in social settings with Everett and at certain nurses' functions. And I'm not going to share with you the capacity in which I attended those functions. Gwendolyn has always been described as a gentle, compassionate, and loving person. In my view, she is the nightingale of the nursing profession. She understood and devoted her life to her vocation. Everyone, my dear friend, I know how much you loved and cared for your dear wife. However, rest assured that Almighty God will give you the grace and the strength to accept His holy will. Your loss is heaven's gain. I bless you all. like to invite a representative of the Trinidad and Tobago Registered Nurses Association.
Good morning, all. I am representing the Trinidad and Tobago Registered Nurses Association, as you were told. As at this time, again, as you heard from the President of the Caribbean Nurses. Thank you. The President is with a contingent of nurses at the Caribbean Nurses Organization's 32nd Biennial Conference in Jamaica, a meeting at which, as she said, Gwen, in her capacity as the organization's vice president, would have been present, held permitting. Gwendolyn Luby Snags, registered nurse, licensed midwife, district health visitor, nurse manager of the expanded program in immunization, working tirelessly in ensuring that the immunization status of our nation's children was maintained at a high level. Gwen represented the profession in various situations and spheres. As a registered nurse and midwife practicing in the clinical area, colleagues found her to be dependable, caring, and supportive towards them and the patients under their charge. Later, during her practice as a district health visitor, she continued to exhibit these qualities. As she matured within her chosen professions, she sought other avenues through which she could advance nursing and healthcare. Thus, she became a member of the nurses section in the Public Services Association. There, her ability and dedication was recognized and she, was, she rose to the position of vice president, advocating the causes of not only nursing personnel, but the entire public service, as you would hear more about. This fervor for the support and advancement of fellow workers she brought into the Trinidad and Tobago Registered Nurses Association, where she served in various offices. As a member of the Northern Branch, the association is broken up into branches. She spoke well, she, worked, she served well, working tirelessly to advance the causes of the branch and TTRNA as a whole. She continued with the same order when she assumed the position of chairman of the branch and sought out interests at the central executive or board level. On behalf of the branch, because I was a member of that branch, or well, I am a member of that branch, on behalf of the branch, I can say she will be truly missed. Recognizing her leadership qualities, we were fully supportive when she aspired to and attained the position of president of the Trinidad and Tobago Registered Nurses Association. During her presidency, she worked tirelessly towards the achievement of union status of the association. It was fitting, therefore, that under her presidency, The association obtained a certificate of recognition as a trade union in 2014. It was a pleasure working alongside her at central executive level. Though it was sometimes frustrating to us when she insisted at all times on adherence to the rules of Robert, to the use of Robert's rules in the conduct of our meetings. She never gave up. She had to use them. Despite her focus on the board and on the bread and butter issues, she involved herself unstintingly when we mounted our conferences and fundraisers. We shared many memorable times working on these projects. It was therefore with pride and a feeling of confidence that the association nominated her for service at the Caribbean level, where she held the position of vice president of the Caribbean Nurses Organization up to the time of her death. This organization cherished her, as you would have heard from the president, and welcomed her inputs, which were grounded in knowledge and experience. They are at this time mourning her demise, because I've been hearing from some of them who are over there at this time, and I know they are. I cannot end without expressing on behalf of the senior nursing fraternity of this country their sorrow on her passing. She always looked out for us, her administrators, her tutors, and during the COVID-19 pandemic, despite her illness, 
she navigated us through the system. I mean, we depended on her. She allayed our anxieties, and we love her and will miss her. We cherished her. On behalf of the Trinidad and Tobago Registered Nurses Association, the nursing personnel in Trinidad and Tobago, and I take this opportunity and the nursing personnel in Trinidad and Tobago, and I take this opportunity to say, on behalf of my family too, we extend condolences to the Snags and Luby families. Everell, we love you. We will never forget you. We'll be always there for you. May God bless and comfort you. Thank you. I would now like to invite the representative from the expanded program on immunization. Good morning. To Mr. Snags and the entire family members. Good morning also to special representatives of special groups and organizations represented here and members of this nursing fraternity. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jacqueline Charles and I am the former EPI Assistant Manager, Ministry of Health. I am Joan Edwards, past secretary of Mrs. Snags at the EPI unit. Before I begin this morning, I would like to extend apologies to the Snags family on behalf of Ms. Grace Sukchan, the current EPI manager, who could not be here today as she is currently out of the country on travel duties. In the book of Romans 13:7, it says, Render therefore to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Custom to whom custom. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. Today, my colleagues and I, representing both past and present members of the expanded program and immunization, Ministry of Health, give tribute and honor to Mrs. Gwendolyn Luby Snags. Ms. Snags, as she was fondly called, or Luby, served as manager of the expanded program in immunization from 2007 to the year 2016. She had a profound passion and love for immunization. And over the years, her name became synonymous with immunization. Nurse Nags took immunization from the corridors of the parliament to government ministries, Tetron, the Coast Guard, CAFA, PAHO, the malls, the streets, the promenades throughout the length and breadth of Trinidad, and even Tobago, just to name a few. She enjoyed doing outreach programs to the fullest. She was a people's person and enjoyed meeting and interacting with people from all walks of life, always with a beautiful smile on her face. It seemed as if she knew everyone and everyone knew her. During her tenure, the Snags planned and facilitated many educational immunization workshops for nurses, with whom she shared her knowledge and years of valued experience. She also planned EPI forums for young medical doctors together with her staff and Dr. Kumar Sundarnidi to give them accurate knowledge on immunization practices. Mrs. Snags played a pivotal role in the introduction of the human papilloma virus vaccine, or HPV, in Trinidad and Tobago to prevent cervical cancer in young girls and women. 
and other HPV-related diseases to young men. She attended several international EPI meetings over the years, where she was always highly respected and fondly loved by all other EPI managers, and fondly known as Gwen. Nisnaz was a walking encyclopedia on immunization, possessing a vast wealth of knowledge and experience. It is that love for immunization which drew her back to assist in the COVID-19 immunization program and serve as COVID-19 vaccination nurse until her illness. As our manager, Ms. Nals was a woman of class, a woman of substance, a woman of diplomacy and protocol. She was a mentor, a teacher, an exemplar, a stickler for excellence. She was quiet, but strong. We never, never heard her speak loudly. And even if she tried to, she just couldn't do it. We never heard her shout or quarrel. She was humble, confident in herself, devoted and committed to duty. She had a heart of compassion and love. She loved a good line and a good curry duck. She was a woman of phenomenal strength, strength that she got from the Lord, because above all else, she was a woman of faith, faith in God, and she lived her life by the grace of God. His grace was always sufficient for her. So today, on behalf of the expanded program in Immunization Ministry of Health, we extend our deepest, deepest condolences to Mr. Snags and the entire family. And we just say that we treasure the memories that we had with her, the experiences that we had with her, what she taught us, invaluable. And we just bless you and may God give you peace and comfort during this time and may Luby rest in perpetual peace. Thank you. To deliver the eulogy, I invite my brother, Brant Snags, to the lectern. Good morning to the Honorable Dr. Keith Rowley and Minister of Health, Mr. Minister Dial Singh. Good morning to the members of the Ministry of Health, TTRNA, City of Port of Spain, City of Port of Spain Credit Union, Providence Girls, and all of us who touch mom's heart. I'd like to start off by reading two quotes. To my second mother, a literal angel on earth, the most selfless person I know, thank you for all you have done for me, your commitment to giving yourself for your family and others was unmatched. No task too big or too small as long as it involved helping someone. Your life has exemplified service to others, responsibility, and charity. Thank you for the lessons you have taught me along the way, which I will carry with me all the days of my life. I will surely miss your words of wisdom and messages of love and support. Enjoy your well-deserved rest until we meet again. Love always, Javon. The second, you know when we you know when people ask you why you love someone, and most times you have a list of reasons why? Well, for me, my love for Gail is not because I married into the Snags family and inherited mom as a mother-in-law. It is because our unique bond goes far beyond that. She was my friend. She always supported me and was my cheerleader. 
but most of all, I was her daughter. Never in law, but daughter, and she loved me. I hear her saying it now, Krista, I love you, I love you, I love you. And I'm ever grateful I got to tell her, and will say it forevermore, Mom, I love you, I'm grateful for you, and I will miss you, Krista. A message from my brother, not by blood, and my wife, who by my mom's own admission, for her, she was her favorite between us. This to me represents an idea of who Gwendolyn was and forever will be. A mother, an inspiration, and a friend. My mom's entire life has been filled with many experiences, some of which I got to hear for the first time recently, others served as reminders of things that I knew. Every story told had to do with acts of generous service and being a beautiful soul. Many persons I spoke with over the last few days since mom's passing were from her professional life, each given accolades and reference to the type of leader and person she was to them, able to recall things that she did and things that she said. Those who knew her as Auntie Gwen or Auntie Ira from the family side also spoke, spoke of her kindness through things that she did or helped them with. Both groups go on to say that they can tell many more stories. As this is the world we knew her, as this is who the world knew her to be. A human, but even more so, a lady. Elegant, charming, and charismatic. A lady that put others before herself in every way she could to help them achieve the best versions of themselves or help them through their battles. She did so through action and prayer. For me, my fondest and most profound memories were how my mother felt. The coolness of her skin, the softness of her hugs, the purity of her laughs whenever I tickled her. Our bond was so special that sometimes we spoke without the use of words. We were able to do this because we truly paid attention to each other. We understood each other. I remember there was a time that I got home late from a party and I knew I wanted to sleep in late, but that wasn't something that typically happened in our home. So I fitted some pillows under a sheet in my room with the hope of if disrupted or if disturbed and discovered to not be in bed, the assumption would be that I wasn't home. I believe there was my cousin, Danielle, who later told me that story where in fact, she went in my room looking for me and realized I wasn't there. Saying, I thought Bryant was in his bed, but he not there. My mom replied with attitude, he fixed them pillows like that. My cousin replied, no, he must have just thrown the sheet on the bed. After my long sleep in another part of the house, returning to my room with some other pillows, I was greeted by my cousin with, eh, hey, hey, eh, you home? I come looking for you, but didn't see you, as she continued relaying the conversation she just had with mom. Daniel then says, hmm, your mother really know your boy. I hug my mom almost every day that I saw her, always taking a moment just to feel our embrace. After the start of the pandemic, the way we shared hugs was by resting our foreheads together for a brief few seconds, saying whatever we needed to at that point, whether it be, I love you, or I miss you. My mother was my best friend. I didn't realize that until the day she died. She knew most parts of me without being actively involved in my day-to-day -day life. She didn't need to be there physically to know me. I only now know she knew me because I am just like her. During the testimonials I earlier mentioned given about my mother, I listened to how she was described and in the regards she was spoken of, willing to go beyond what is required, 
willing to sacrifice herself to help others, willing to sacrifice herself to help someone in need. As these tributes were spoken to me about my mother, I couldn't help think, wow, I'm just like her. I only say this because the people I interact with daily in my life have often referenced me in the same way that my mom is being spoken of me. I am my mother's child. It's brought me still, it's brought me, and still brings me a joy and comfort to know how fortunate I am to have gotten someone like my mother, how fortunate I am to have gotten some of my mother's traits. My mother grew into the woman she is because of the love she had and shared with my father. Love is a term we all have different perspectives on, as well as how and when it should be expressed. We all know that verse from the book of Corinthians. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. This is the love my parents shared. They were highly respected public figures in their respective fields, and so with this consciously and subconsciously reflected traits of the organizations on a daily basis to the onlooker. But I always looked at my parents, observed how they interacted with each other, publicly and privately. When they stepped into the street, they stood by each other's sides, always proud to introduce the other to their respective circles, always proud to speak of each other's accomplishments. At home, when I sometimes spoke with one about the other, both would be able to say how they think the other would perceive something or respond. It was because she knew him and he knew her. Inside, out, outside in. They were always kind to each other, though they expressed their love differently. As I got older, my conversations with my parents shifted, but also my understanding of their love for each other. My understanding of their love for each other grew. 40 plus years in the police service and 50 plus years in nursing. One would think you can't teach an old dog new tricks. But again, I looked at my parents. I observed them with no bias nor judgment. Their love continued to grow, but in a new way. I watched my father become a chauffeur, driving my mother all over the country, spending countless hours behind the wheel. I watched my father become her assistant when she took on new roles or projects for the ministry. I watched my father become a cook when my mom became exhausted to be in the kitchen. I watched my father become a nurse after my mom broke her leg. I watched how this icon of a man stepped out of his comfort zone to try to be everything my mother was to him. A love, a provider, and a friend. My father loves my mother, and still to this day says to me, your mother was a beautiful woman, you know. And my mother loved and still loves my father dearly. Beyond their temporary separation from each other's side. Right now, I'm sure she's probably speaking to the other angels as to how much she adored him. When it came to her faith as well, nothing stood in the way of her professing her love to, for, and about Jesus. The Catholic Church and the teachings of the Church, as best as she could, she tried to live by. She made time to be involved in the Church, and when she couldn't, she made time for prayer. God was always in her heart and at her side. Many of us knew her as a praying woman. But do you know that many of her prayer were not for herself, but for us? Coming down to her last days on earth, when I sat and visited with mom, sometimes we shared emotional moments where she confided. Other times I sat and watched her pray for her family 
and friends. The only time she prayed for herself was to stop her pains or give her the strength to endure, both of which God answered. Aside from those moments, mom prayed for us and asked me to tell my father and my siblings a message, her message. I love you. You mean everything to me. We never knew what she sacrificed of herself to be the woman we have all come to know and love, both professionally and personally. What personal denials she had in order to fulfill the request by someone else. But she did so willingly. Because that is how blessed of a soul my mother was and still is. Often, but not frequently, my mom mentioned to me of her desires to have started her own company. To some, our ideas of owning a company or business speak to our desires for improved qualities of life or earning capacity. For my mother, her desire was to have a company that looked after and cared for the elderly. Her idea for her dream business was a desire to serve. Her idea for her company was to have a facility that provided quality health care from a different perspective than she had done for her entire working life. One that offered both in-house and outpatient or client care. Her dream was to take nursing to a new level and bring a mother's touch to caring for the elderly. Mom was a registered nurse that spent many years working to revolutionize and be impactful in her field, rising to some of the highest ranks in several organizations. Organizations at their core were formed as serving bodies. Yet still she hoped to do more, to serve more. Recently in one of those conversations we often had, she spoke of regret in never being able to have brought her vision to life. She had already registered her business name, opened an account, and acquired checkbooks. She had mentally prepared herself to start this business after retirement, but never got around to it. Instead, when she was given the opportunity by the Ministry of Health to return to work in a different capacity, where her impact and involvement can reach hundreds of thousands of citizens, she jumped at that opportunity. Though aged herself, she never let that hold her back from hitting the ground running at an opportunity to be a nurse. My mom named her company Queen of Peace in tribute to Mary, Mother of God, never leaving her faith nor church behind. My hope and intention is to bring that vision of my mother's to life, and I pray that through the mercy of God, I see it through to the standard that she would have hoped for. And I ask for guidance and assistance from you, her peers, who knew her best in this profession and all her capacities to see Gwen, Nurse Luby, or Nurse Luby Snags dream realized. The name Gwendolyn Luby Snags is not a name that should ever be forgotten, for she is a woman that will live forever in my heart and many others. Mom, that old Providence girl, is a queen of my heart and I will forever be proud to say that I am your son. Though I may not always get things right, I promise you, Mom, publicly, that I will live my life in a way that brings continued honor to your legacy and name, and that one day I will see you again, where I may yet again feel the tenderness of love and affection we shared on earth. I love you, son, son.
we will now have a song of tribute entitled Song to Mama. And it will be done by Liam Ronaldo Allen, Gerald Snags, and Jarrell Snags. Everything you've given me, I always keep it inside. You're the driving force in my life. There isn't anything or anyone that I can be, and it just wouldn't feel right. On my side, you were there for me to love. took up for me when everyone was down on me he always did understand you gave me the strength to go on there were so many times looking back at all was so afraid and then you come to me and say i could face anything and no one else can do what you have done for me you will
I invite us to stand as we pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant, Gwendolyn, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. I invite you to be seated as we have our readings. I urge us all to please turn off our cell phones so that we can have a prayerful celebration of the Eucharist as Gwendolyn would want. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We know that he who raised the Lord Jesus to life would, would raise us with Jesus in our turn. Put us by his side and you with us. You see, all this is for your benefit so that the more grace is multiplied among people the more thanksgiving there will be to the glory of God. That is why there is no weakening on our part. And instead, though this outer man of ours may be falling into decay, the inner man is renewed day by day. Yes, the troubles which are soon over, though they weigh little, train us for the carrying of a weight of eternal glory, which is out of all proportion to them. And so we have no eyes for things that are visible, but only for things that are invisible. For visible things only last for a time, and the invisible things are eternal. For we know that when the te tent that we live in on earth is folded up, there is a house built by God for us, an everlasting home not made by human hands in the heaven. The word of the Lord.
Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, escorted by all the angels, then he will take his seat on his throne of glory. All the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate men one from another as the shepherd separates sheep from goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, come, you whom my father has blessed, take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you made me welcome, naked and you clothed me, sick and you visited me, in prison and you came to see me. Then the virtuous will say to him in reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and make you welcome, naked and clothe you, sick or in prison and go to see you? And the king will answer, I tell you solemnly, in so far as you did this to one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it to me. Next he will say to those on his left hand, go away from me with your curse upon you to the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you never gave me food. I was thirsty and you never gave me anything to drink. I was a stranger and you never made me welcome, naked and you never clothed me, sick and in prison and you never visited me. Then it will be their turn to ask, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, a stranger or naked, sick or in prison, and did not come to your help? Then he will answer, I tell you solemnly, in so far as you neglected to do this to one of the least of these, you neglected to do it to me. And they will go away to eternal punishment and the virtuous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated.
I invite you to read along with me the front page of this funeral program. The words of our beloved Gwendolyn Luby Snags. Always believe that God will grant you your heart's desires once you have faith and belief. Even in moments of despair, have faith and call on the Holy Spirit to be your guide at all times. In everything you do, find God. Mother Teresa of Calcutta sent shockwaves across the world. And one of the ways she sent shockwaves was she made these very powerful and simple speeches. But that wasn't important to her. What was important was her work of charity. And one of those speeches she made said this, persons in the helping profession have a certain ideal, a certain thing they seek after. But Christians in the helping profession, they serve a person, Christ. Gwendolyn Luby Snags understood that each patient she interacted with was the living face of Christ. The very apt gospel passage chosen by the family reflects that she recognized that each time she visited someone, she was visiting Jesus. And now she has the blessed reward to enter into the eternal inheritance promised to the righteous. When Gwendolyn's daughter Heather asked me, very soon after her passing to celebrate the funeral, I thought to myself, you want one of the youngest priests in the country to do it? But then I started to think that that is exactly what her legacy was about. Mentorship. Passing on the baton. Our beloved Gwendolyn recognized that none of us is going to be here forever. So she continually trained, taught, mentored. We could learn that in our country, huh? Because we like to hold on. But we need to learn sometimes to let go. So my history with the Snags family goes back to primary school. Brown pants and cream shirts. Walking from Roshi Boys RC down to police headquarters and feeling so special as I walk past all the police officers and Bryant and myself sitting there in the office waiting to go home in Barataria. And it feels almost like life circled back that I re-enter the Snags family when I was invited by the St. Finbar's prayer group, a very important part of Gwendolyn's spiritual life, to pray and to share with them. And it was a beautiful spiritual encounter. And then probably a year later, Gwendolyn asked that we have this family prayer time. And if you knew her, that was important. Because as much as all of the accomplishments we've heard are truly things to cherish, I think there were two important factors of her life. Family and God. So for her to be able to have that opportunity to have siblings even from abroad, to have a beloved husband, her children, grandchildren gathered together to pray, her heart was at rest. And the circle of life continued when I was asked to go and Everell was there in the hospital and to pray and to anoint her and she was in good spirits and we prayed. And then we knew the end was coming. Of all the things she could have asked or focused on, she wanted the sacraments of the church. She wanted to receive the forgiveness of God, to be anointed, and to receive communion. That image has not left me because she lay there so peacefully. She was asleep, actually. And I thought of the irony of this person who has led the nursing profession was humble enough to now receive care. And as I started praying, she opened her eyes very gently and she said, Father, even though I was a son of sorts to her, she always called me Father. Father, so sorry I couldn't be in Mass today. 
I said, don't worry, auntie. And you can't make it to church, church will come to you. So we had that beautiful time to pray, that beautiful time where she received the body of Christ for the very last time. And she closed her eyes and she slept. And I'm sure in the next 24 hours, the last 24 hours of her life, her mind was focused again on the two important factors of her life, family and God. So as we continue on this pilgrim journey of life, we will be asking ourselves, how can we pay tribute to this hero, this leader? And all sorts of ideas may come up. Let we name a wing at the hospital to her now. Let we give a posthumous award, maybe a scholarship. But my encounters with her in the last days, I think there's one legacy that we could take the battle to continue that she will truly appreciate. To love God and to love neighbor. That's what it comes down to. It comes down to the way that we are called to recognize we've come from God and to God we shall return. The beautiful funeral liturgy of the Catholic Church has the words you will hear. For us believers, life is not ended but changed. So as believers in Jesus Christ, we truly believe and know that the life of our sister continues in a new way, in a transformed way as she prays for her children and grandchildren. So how will you take that battle of Gwendolyn Luby Snags and continue the love of God and neighbor? Because all of the accomplishments and awards fade away, but what remains is the love of Christ, the love of Christ which conquers all things, even death. We give God thanks for the gift of this precious life, this calm, quiet, humble mentor who is willing to hand over her legacy to a new generation. And we pray that a new generation of citizens of Trinidad and Tobago may have that selfless service, knowing that each time we're called to support or help someone in need, we are truly encountering the living face of Jesus Christ. Love God and love neighbor. Amen. Let us now stand as we offer our prayers and petitions to our loving God. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our sister Gwendolyn, who was given the promise of eternal life in baptism, that she may be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. For Gwendolyn, who lived a life of generosity and dedication to God and her family, that she may be welcomed with love and joy into the heavenly home of eternal Father. We pray to the Lord. For, for Gwendolyn, whose faith sustained her during this earthly life, that she may be received by the saints with love and joy into the eternal dwelling place prepared for her, we pray to the Lord. Lord 
for Gwendolyn, husband, Ethel and their children and their grandchildren, that may be granted consolation from the Holy Spirit and discover hope in their grief. We pray to the Lord on her prayer. For all our family members and friends who tirelessly offered support and care for Gwendolyn, that they may be rewarded with peace and consolation for their love and selfless, selfless service. We pray to the Lord. For all who work with the sick, especially cancer patients, and the age, and for all who attended to the needs of Gwendolyn, that they may be granted the peace, patience, understanding needed to continue their compassionate care. We pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, especially Gwendolyn, and the departed members of our families and community, that they may share in the peace, joy, and happiness of eternal life in heaven with the true God. We pray to the Lord. For all gathered here to worship in faith, that the bonds which unite us may be strengthened as we look forward in hope to being united one day in the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. With the human experience of death, memories come to mind. And so I invite you in your own relationship with Gwendolyn to see if there's an area that you need to seek God's forgiveness, something you wish you had done, something you're sorry that you did, something that you need to ask God's forgiveness to forgive Gwendolyn at this time. Find that peace with God at this time. We pray to the Lord. God of all love and goodness, we thank you for the gift of your love, which raised the friend of Jesus, Lazarus, from the dead. We pray that that love may be extended to your beloved daughter, Gwendolyn, that she may rest for all eternity with you and eat at the eternal banquet. We make our prayers known. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we have a collection at the request of the family. This will be in aid of embracing all real survivors.
my sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Gwendolyn, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life has changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, Say, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jason, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Gwendolyn, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters, our ancestors, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the gentle light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints, saints of Digo Martin, saints of Trinidad and Tobago, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Sister Gwendolyn stood for unity and bringing people together. So together as beloved children of God, we recite, we say, we pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us briefly offer each other some sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus, the resurrection and the life. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For the reception of Holy Communion, if you are coming forward to Communion, you can go where you see the priest or deacon, and we continue to observe our COVID-19 protocol, so we ask that you sanitize before you receive Communion, as well as keep a safe distance from the person in front of you.
I invite us to stand as we pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Gwendolyn Luby Snags may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we have the final commendation rites by Deacon Nigel Thomas.
now have some brief words of gratitude from Mr. Patrick Luby. Good morning. Good afternoon. I'm on daylight saving time. All protocol observe. I don't know how to say thank you to all these faces that I see here, because I know that Ira was a well-known person. But again, the president, minister, and to all the different cabinet people that spoke via Zoom, to all the organizations that Ira was affiliated with, and my memory doesn't serve me correctly because I haven't been here for quite a long time. On behalf of the Snags and the Lubies, I would like to say thank you. Deepest, deepest appreciation to each and every soul that is in this building right now. And to the ones online, to the ones that couldn't make it, to the ones that wish they could have been here. So, I know my sister will all this rain is just her crying and smiling down on you all. You know, don't, don't look at the rain as a negative thing, you know. So, again, we appreciate all of you being here. Thank you to the choir, to everybody that served. I have walked away from religion for a while, but one thing stuck in my mind, a song that they sang a long time ago as I was a little boy in Western Boys R.C., if I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. Ira, I know that's your message, because that's what you said. Again, thank you. Blessings to you all. Thank you. Let us please stand. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Gwendolyn. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully meet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. To you, O oh Lord, we commend the soul of Gwendolyn, your servant. In the sight of this world, she is now dead. In your sight, may she live forever. 
Forgive whatever sins she committed through human weakness, and in your goodness grant her everlasting peace. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto Gwendolyn, O Lord. May she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Auntie Gwendolyn, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and lead you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. My sisters and brothers, I invite you to bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people, the members of this family, the friends, the colleagues who cry out to you in their need and strengthen our hope in your lasting goodness. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. How do you honor a mentor? Continue their le legacy. Love God and love neighbor.
entire staff of the EPI unit would like to take this opportunity to express our condolences to the friends and family of Ms. Nags. I had the opportunity to interrupt on numerous occasions with Ms. Nags in her capacity as EPI manager. When I joined this unit in 2017, she visited me on several occasions and was always ready to lend her expertise. In 2019, Ms. Nags was contracted with PAHO to assist with the implementation of the Electric Immunization Registry and we worked closely on that project. I must say, I have learned a lot from her. In 2021, she again joined the EPI unit where she was contracted as a vaccination nurse manager for the COVID-19 program. Nurse Nags is professional but compassionate. She was always ready to assist and what stood out about her was her organization and management skills and her people skills. She always encouraged nurses to educate and improve themselves. We will always remember her in our various roles at the EPI unit. All of us have had the opportunity to interact with her and she has touched the lives of so many persons. You provide the fire My sincere condolences to Everett and the rest of the Snags family. Many years ago, I visited a patient at Ward 16 at the Port of Spain at General Hospital. In conversation with him, he told me how the nurse who had worked the previous night was so kind and he found her different from other nurses. I made it my duty to find out who that nurse was. I later learned that she was one nurse Gwendolyn Ruby Snats. As time passed, I got to know Everett very well and attended functions in a different capacity where Everett introduced me to his dear wife, Gwendolyn. I have pleasant memories of meeting her on several occasions in social settings with Everett and at certain nurses.